morning, Lionheart. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. And if you watched yesterday, you know that we are continuing on from yesterday. We still have a lot of Porto to see, and I want you to see it with me. Days with Jordan the Lion begins Portuguese style now. Well, so far it's been a great trip. All the people I've met have been wonderful. The food's been wonderful. The prices and everything here are pretty reasonable, and hey, just a fun time. I highly recommend this place. Though I don't know still if I'm gonna do this or not. You know, this is the home of port wine. I think I should probably try some port wine, don't you? Decided to stop and eat, and this place has port wine. Why not? And a cork menu. All right, I got the seafood rice. Look at that. I said when they brought it out here, I was I was doing a live stream and I was joking to the guys. I go, hey, is there an octopus in there? And he goes, after you eat this, you can go jump in the water over in the uh, the river if you want, right over there, because there's some in there. And then there's my uh, my first glass of port wine. Oh God, that's good. God, that is good. So I am by no means a wine aficionado. In fact, I'm the exact opposite. You could probably put vinegar in front of me and I would know the difference, but I did do the Vincent Price Tales of Terror um, wine tasting scene when I started this, Cask of Amontillado scene, and uh, it's good. It's got a nice sweetness to it. I like it. And I haven't had one bad meal here yet, not in Portugal. This is the inside of where we just ate. Great art, huh? All right, lunch was fantastic. We're getting a little bit of rain, but I'm gonna walk over here. I wanna walk over the bridge. Look at this little church. Oh, that's nice. That bridge. We gotta work our way back over here. about the halfway point. It's the only bummer to this is once you get to the other side, you have to go up about a billion stairs. <laughs> I probably would have been better off going up there and walking across. Oh wait, I just noticed that, that lift. You see that? Wow. Funicular. Pretty good view right there, right? I don't know what we got going on here, but this is what the cops are ushering through. It's like a sports car show, I guess. What? Ferrari? Hello. Where's the bandit? Where's bandit? Yeah, on second thought, what I'm gonna do is there was a church over here I wanna check out. So we'll go down here, we'll see the church, then we'll work our way back up. We'll go to the uh, Porto Cathedral later. This is a real hot spot over here. In fact, I just bought um, a handful of my souvenirs here. There's so much good handmade stuff here, it's unreal. I actually haven't bought anything for me, it's for other people. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you guys seeing this? The, the centerpiece they have inside that church looks like Captain Caveman. Pretty cool. A cube floating on water. Hello? Oh no, those are pigeons. I think they're supposed to be pigeons, right? Mike Tyson would flip out if I get that wrong. So this is what I was talking about. Look at this. I mean, the hair is a little bit different length, but... I like it. So the church that we're heading off to now apparently has some pretty interesting catacombs, so I want to go see that. Look at all the architecture up there. I love that. Doesn't that look cool? These people are having a party boat out there, and as soon as I heard the music and looked out there at them dancing, the first thing I thought of was, 
Season one, episode one of Arrested Development when Tobias gets on the wrong boat and is out there dancing. Yep. Plaque over there says that Prince Henry the Navigator was born in this house in 1394. For all you Prince Henry the Navigator fans. I just picked up some pretty cool souvenirs inside this handmade store. That is what we're looking for right there on the corner. That's what we're looking for. Wow. Let's go get a ticket. So here's a little history on what we're gonna see. It says the Dispatch House of St. Francis, Third Order, was built in the mid-18th century. Nassani designed both the building and some of the carvings used to decorate the inside. The underground floor houses the brother's grave. The church, which was begun in 1795, was a Porto's first neoclassical church. The original drawings were made by Antonio Pinto de Miranda, and a number of famous artists contributed to the interior. All right, we got our ticket. Six euros. Now let's go see the inside of this church. So they actually don't allow any photos or anything in here, but they made an exception for me, so I have to keep it minimal. Look at his head, his head's getting cut off. Well, that was one of the most amazing churches I've ever seen, and I can almost understand why they wouldn't want you to take photos, because I don't think there's any camera that can do that place justice. Now, normally, when I go on these trips, I don't, uh, I don't save things in my phone that they won't allow me to film, but I had read this place was so beautiful that I had saved it and didn't realize that you couldn't film here, so when I went and paid and everything, and then walked to go in, they said, hey, you can't take photos, you can't film, you can't do anything like that in here. I actually went just to ask, I, I was like, yeah, I know it was my fault, but can I get my money back if I can't film? And uh, they made a small exception, they said to keep it very minimal, so I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. That is a highly, highly recommended church. I, I, I have seen a lot of great churches in my time, but that might be in the top two or three that I think I've ever seen. It was really amazing, the detail and how well they captured the emotion and all of that work. So hopefully that'll explain why my uh, my camera work was a little bit shaky or a little crooked or a little wackier than usual. I wasn't trying any kind of MC Escher <laughs> stuff or anything like that. Hey, let's see if we can catch that Tram City tour. I'd like to take one of those. So I didn't get on that one. It's gonna be another 20 minutes. All the seats were full and I didn't feel like juggling around because uh, last time I did that I almost hurt a very sensitive part of my body. All right, on second thought, we're not taking that tram because it's going that way and everywhere that I need to vlog now is that way. Hey, I wonder if I can borrow that Wright Brothers bike that's over there attached to the wall. Nice, way cool, even a good color. All right, rain on the cobblestone, Pumas don't fail me now. Okay, we might have just got detoured again. I just see a sign here that says Museum of Marionettes. Let's go look at it. It says it's up here somewhere. If you watch me in LA, you know I love marionette theaters, and this one has actually been around for 30 years. They do a performance every day, they have two theaters, and they have a great museum, so we're in the museum right now. Oh, these are great. And this one's two floors. I've actually never seen this kind before. It's like a flat piece. Now I'm hoping my schedule will allow. They've invited me to come check out one of the performances tomorrow and I would love to because I love seeing marionette performances, especially when I 
Haven't got to see one in a foreign country before. Oh, look at these, I love this. These are great, these kind of have a, uh, that Jim Henson type feel. The wrapped Muppets where he does them kind of out of felt. Those are great. Oh, way cool, check that out. Shows you how they make them, kind of the, the building process, the molds for the hands and the faces and how they paint the faces, that's really cool. You don't really, I mean, you don't get to see that inside the Bob Baker one, which is pretty interesting. I like that part. And here's some pictures of people making them. Now this one actually shows the, uh, the different steps of the process of painting and changing and how they detail it. That's pretty cool. And if you want to check out a performance, this is where you go. Teatro de Malamonte. It's actually right next door to the museum, so you can do both. So this one is from something that they did called Exit, and they're really proud of this one because Exit, they used as many forms of artistry as you could possibly use. They incorporated dance and music and video, and uh, they said they even incorporated 3D into creating a whole new experience with the marionettes in this one. And then this one was from Beckett, which is really cool. And they also did Macbeth. So they're, they're constantly trying to uh, to take marionettes into a new direction with as many advanced technologies as they have available, which is really cool. So here is the museum, and if you're looking for the uh, theater, it's right there. All right, now we gotta head up this festive alley. And now we gotta climb these stairs. And more, and more, four flights. Look where we ended up. Not a bad view. And that over there is kind of our goal. It's a pretty cool fountain. Yeah, I guess all this trolling around in the rain's worth it. That is awesome. Look at that pillar or that column. I think this is actually the backside, so I see them redirecting people to the other side to get tickets, so let's do that. Now, I kind of teased you guys with this the other day when I ended the vlog, so now we're going to check it out the Porto Cathedral. First off, check out the molding on this fountain. That's pretty cool. Even with the algae, it's looking pretty awesome. You can see the, the figure of the guy standing on another one. Let's see if we can go up here and take a little closer look. Looks like they have the gate locked over here, so we'll have to do it like this. All right, let's go check it out. And even down to the floor. Do you see that face in there? Alright, I just paid the admission to go to the extra part of the church. And I think it's worth it. This is the claustro, it says. Look at that. I think this way I'll get a tour a little bit more of it. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, I think I can go up there now. And maybe up in there. We'll see. Now this is St. Vincent's Chapel. Look at that organ and the painting above it, wow. Let's see what's in here. Well, your first impression is my first impression here. First looks. Wow. You can see how much of that's worn off over time. I wanna get a closer look at this before we go upstairs. I don't care if it is raining. I'm the only one willing to come out here and look at it. <laughs> All the people here. Dang raindrop. Now this takes us to the treasure room, they call it. Look at all those crowns. Now, let's go see more. I think we can go up now, even further up. Oh, hello. That's where we were at a little bit ago, down there. Let's go get the best view we can of the city. Oh no, that's just a view of part of the castle wall that you can't get down to. Well, I call it a castle. I mean, it's a cathedral, but boy, doesn't it look like a castle to you? We've been to a lot of castles together. I think we know what a castle looks like at this point, don't we? <laughs> It's gonna be a real far departure after this when we go to that famous like architectural McDonald's after seeing this beauty. Man, I love this gothic architecture, don't you? I love the stained glass windows, even though they're so small you almost can't even appreciate them. I love them. Now let's check out this part of the wall that we haven't seen yet.
Can you see the story in there? Do not underestimate the power of a waterproof camera. Take it from me. You know, when I was eating, the guy that served me said, you know, it never rains here. It never ever rains here like this. So what are the chances that it would rain like this when I'm here? Well, check out that statue. Extra, extra, read all about it. He's even got a cigarette hanging out of the mouth. All right, here's the famous McDonald's we were told to come check out. Interesting. Oh wow, that is cool, man. That doesn't look like a McDonald's at all. All the murals and everything on the walls. The stained glass windows. What? Are you kidding me? This is McDonald's? All right, I agree. Coolest McDonald's I ever saw. Wow, what a great statue. I just saw like three or four of them I wanted to show you. Well, here's one of the fountains I wanted to show you. There's a woman sitting on top, and then look at all these like monstrous gargoyle faces right at her feet. There's another one over here. And let's go check this one out right over here as well. It's like a bunch of a bunch of cherubs holding up like a bowl of fruit, looks like, right? I think they're having a protest of some sort over here. Where this big white banner is, something's going on. Guy with a megaphone's going absolutely berserk. Yep, I definitely say that's a protest. A little bit of a pool here, but there's no statue or fountain or really anything in it. Now there's a statue up here to Goretti, whoever that is. I'm not exactly up on who it is, but the statue is pretty awesome. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today. Boy, did this day take a turn I did not expect, but it was a great day. Hope you enjoyed seeing Porto. Tomorrow we take off and we go to another fascinating and interesting city, probably the most beautiful city on this whole tour. So I hope you guys are back with me tomorrow. We're gonna take off from Porto and we're gonna go see Sintra. Have a great night, Lionhearts. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting. If you'd like to help fund future adventures, Check out my uh, links in the description below and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.